மறக்காம லைக் பண்ணுங்க ஷேர் பண்ணுங்க கமெண்ட் பண்ணுங்க சப்ஸ்கிரைப் பண்ணுங்க நன்றி வணக்கம் Chapter 7 Structural Organization in Animals Topics to be covered are 7.1 Animal Tissues 7.2 Organ and Organ System or Cockroaches Let's begin with introduction In the preceding chapters you came across a large variety of organisms both unicellular and multicellular of the animal kingdom In unicellular organisms all functions like digestion respiration and reproduction are performed by a single cell In the complex body of multicellular animals the same basic functions are carried out by different groups of cells in a well organized manner the body of a simple organism like hydra is made of different types of cells and the number of cells in each type can be in thousands the human body is composed of billions of cells to perform various functions how do these cells in the body work together in multicellular animals A group of similar cells along with intercellular substances perform a specific function. Such an organization is called tissue. You may be surprised to know that all complex animals consist of only four basic types of tissues. These tissues are organized in specific proportion and pattern to form an organ like stomach, lung, heart and kidney. When two or more organs perform a common function by their physical and or chemical interaction, they together form organ system. For example, digestive system, respiratory system, etc. cells, tissues, organs and organ systems split up the work in a way that exhibits division of labor and contribute to the survival of the body as a whole. 7.1 animal tissues. The structure of the cells vary according to their function. Therefore, The tissues are different and are broadly classified into four types: I, epithelial; 2, connective; 3, muscular; and 4, neural. 7.1.1 epithelial tissue. We commonly refer to an epithelial tissue as epithelium, plural, epithelia. This tissue has a free surface which faces either a body fluid or the outside environment and thus provides a covering or a lining for some part of the body. The cells are compactly packed with little intercellular matrix. There are two types of epithelial tissues namely simple epithelium and compound epithelium. Simple epithelium is composed of a single layer of cells and functions as a lining for body cavities, ducts, and tubes. The compound epithelium consists of two or more cell layers and has protective function as it does in our skin. On the basis of structural modification of the cells Simple epithelium is further divided into three types. These are I, squamous; 2, cuboidal; 3, columnar. The squamous epithelium is made of a single thin layer of flattened cells with irregular boundaries. They are found in the walls of blood vessels and air sacs of lungs and are involved in functions like forming a diffusion boundary. The cuboidal epithelium is composed of a single layer of cube-like cells. This is commonly found in ducts of glands and tubular parts of nephrons in kidneys and its main functions are secretion and absorption. The epithelium of proximal convoluted tubule PCT of nephron in the kidney has microvilli. The columnar epithelium is composed of a single layer of tall and slender cells. Their nuclei are located at the base. Free surface may have microvilli. They are found in the lining of stomach and intestine and help in secretion and absorption. If the columnar or cuboidal cells bear cilia on their free surface, they are called ciliated epithelium. Their function is to move particles or mucus in a specific direction over the epithelium. They are mainly present in the inner surface of hollow organs like bronchioles and fallopian tubes. Some of the columnar or cuboidal cells get specialized for secretion and are called glandular epithelium. They are mainly of two types: unicellular, consisting of isolated glandular cells, goblet cells of the alimentary canal, and multicellular, consisting of cluster of cells, salivary gland. On the basis of the mode of pouring of their secretions, glands are divided into two categories, namely exocrine and endocrine glands. Exocrine glands secrete mucus, saliva, earwax, oil, milk. digestive enzymes and other cell products these products are released through ducts or tubes in contrast endocrine glands do not have ducts their products called hormones are secreted directly into the fluid bathing the gland 
Compound epithelium is made of more than one layer, multi-layered, of cells and thus has a limited role in secretion and absorption. Figure 7.3. Their main function is to provide protection against chemical and mechanical stresses. They cover the dry surface of the skin, the moist surface of buccal cavity, pharynx, inner lining of ducts of salivary glands and of pancreatic ducts. All cells in epithelium are held together with little intercellular material. In nearly all animal tissues, specialized junctions provide both structural and functional links between its individual cells. Three types of cell junctions are found in the epithelium and other tissues. These are called as tight, adhering and gap junctions. Tight junctions help to stop substances from leaking across a tissue. Adhering junctions perform cementing to keep neighboring cells together. Gap junctions facilitate the cells to communicate with each other by connecting the cytoplasm of adjoining cells, for rapid transfer of ions, small molecules and sometimes big molecules. 7.1.2 Connective Tissue Connective tissues are most abundant and widely distributed in the body of complex animals. They are named connective tissues because of their special function of linking and supporting other tissues, organs of the body. They range from soft connective tissues to specialized types, which include cartilage, bone, adipose, and blood. In all connective tissues except blood, the cells secrete fibers of structural proteins called collagen or elastin. The fibers provide strength, elasticity and flexibility to the tissue. These cells also secrete modified polysaccharides, which accumulate between cells and fibers and act as matrix, ground substance. Connective tissues are classified into three types. I. Loose connective tissue, 2. Dense connective tissue and, 3. Specialized connective tissue. Loose connective tissue has cells and fibers loosely arranged in a semi-fluid ground substance, for example, areolar tissue present beneath the skin. Often it serves as a support framework for epithelium. It contains fibroblasts, cells that produce and secrete fibers, macrophages and mast cells. Adipose tissue is another type of loose connective tissue located mainly beneath the skin. The cells of this tissue are specialized to store fats. The excess of nutrients which are not used immediately are converted into fats and are stored in this tissue. Fibers and fibroblasts are compactly packed in the dense connective tissues. Orientation of fibers show a regular or irregular pattern and are called dense irregular and dense irregular tissues. In the dense regular connective tissues, the collagen fibers are present in rows between many parallel bundles of fibers. Tendons which attach skeletal muscles to bones and ligaments which attach one bone to another are examples of this tissue. Dense irregular connective tissue has fibroblasts and many fibers, mostly collagen, that are oriented differently. This tissue is present in the skin. Cartilage, bones and blood are various types of specialized connective tissues. The intercellular material of cartilage is solid and pliable and resists compression. Cells of this tissue chondrocytes, are enclosed in small cavities within the matrix secreted by them, figure 7.6a. Most of the cartilage's invertebrate embryos are replaced by bones in adults. Cartilage is present in the tip of nose, outer ear joints, between adjacent bones of the vertebral column, limbs and hands in adults. Bones have a hard and non-pliable ground substance rich in calcium salts and collagen fibers which give bone its strength. It is the main tissue that provides structural frame to the body. Bones support and protect softer tissues and organs. The bone cells, osteocytes, are present in the spaces called lacunae. Limb bones, such as the long bones of the legs, serve weight-bearing functions. They also interact with skeletal muscles attached to them to bring about movements. The bone marrow in some bones is the site of production of blood cells. Blood is a fluid connective tissue containing plasma, red blood cells, RBC, white blood cells, WBC, and platelets. It is the main circulating fluid that helps in the transport of various substances. You will learn more about blood in chapters 17 and 18. 7.1.3 Muscle Tissue Each muscle is made of many long, cylindrical fibers arranged in parallel arrays. 
These fibers are composed of numerous fine fibrils, called myofibrils. Muscle fibers contract, shorten, in response to stimulation, then relax, lengthen, and return to their uncontracted state in a coordinated fashion. Their action moves the body to adjust to the changes in the environment and to maintain the positions of the various parts of the body. In general, muscles play an active role in all the movements of the body. Muscles are of three types, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. Skeletal muscle tissue is closely attached to skeletal bones. In a typical muscle such as the biceps, striated, striped, skeletal muscle fibers are bundled together in a parallel fashion. A sheath of tough connective tissue encloses several bundles of muscle fibers, you will learn more about this in Chapter 20. The smooth muscle fibers taper at both ends fusiform, and do not show striations, figure 7.7b. Cell junctions hold them together and they are bundled together in a connective tissue sheath. The wall of internal organs such as the blood vessels, stomach and intestine contains this type of muscle tissue. Smooth muscles are involuntary as their functioning cannot be directly controlled. We usually are not able to make it contract merely by thinking about it as we can do with skeletal muscles. Cardiac muscle tissue is a contractile tissue present only in the heart. Cell junctions fuse the plasma membranes of cardiac muscle cells and make them stick together. Communication junctions, intercalated discs, at some fusion points allow the cells to contract as a unit, that is, when one cell receives a signal to contract, its neighbors are also stimulated to contract. 7.1.4 Neural Tissue Neural tissue exerts the greatest control over the body's responsiveness to changing conditions. Neurons, the unit of neural system are excitable cells. The neuroglial cell which constitute the rest of the neural system protect and support neurons. Neuroglia make up more than one half the volume of neural tissue in our body. When a neuron is suitably stimulated, an electrical disturbance is generated which swiftly travels along its plasma membrane. Arrival of the disturbance at the neuron's endings, or output zone, triggers events that may cause stimulation or inhibition of adjacent neurons and other cells, you will study the details in Chapter 21. 7.2 Organ and Organ System The basic tissues mentioned above organize to form organs which in turn associate to form organ systems in the multicellular organisms. Such an organization is essential for more efficient and better coordinated activities of millions of cells constituting an organism. Each organ in our body is made of one or more type of tissues. For example, our heart consists of all the four types of tissues, that is, epithelial, connective, muscular and neural. We also notice, after some careful study that the complexity in organ and organ systems displays certain discernible trend. This discernible trend is called evolutionary trend, you will study the details in class 12. You are being introduced to morphology and anatomy of three organisms at different evolutionary levels to show their organization and functioning. Morphology refers to study of form or externally visible features. In the case of plants or microbes, the term morphology precisely means only this. In case of animals this refers to the external appearance of the organs or parts of the body. The word anatomy conventionally is used for the study of morphology of internal organs in the animals. You will learn the morphology and anatomy of cockroach. Cockroaches are brown or black-bodied animals that are included in class Insectophyllum arthropoda. Bright yellow, red and green colored cockroaches have also been reported in tropical regions. Their size ranges from 1 by 4 inches to 3 inches, 0.6 to 7.6 centimeters, and have long antenna, legs and flat extension of the upper body wall that conceals head. They are nocturnal omnivores that live in damp places throughout the world. They have become residents of human homes and thus are serious pests and vectors of several diseases. 7.4.1 Morphology the adults of the common species of cockroach, Paraplanetum americana are about 34 to 53 mm long with wings that extend beyond the tip of the abdomen in males. The body of the cockroach is segmented and divisible into three distinct regions, 
head, thorax and abdomen. The entire body is covered by a hard chitinous exoskeleton, brown in color. In each segment, exoskeleton has hardened plates called sclerites, tergites dorsally and sternites ventrally, that are joined to each other by a thin and flexible articular membrane, arthrodial membrane. Head is triangular in shape and lies anteriorly at right angles to the longitudinal body axis. It is formed by the fusion of six segments and shows great mobility in all directions due to flexible neck. The head capsule bears a pair of compound eyes. A pair of thread-like antennae arise from membranous sockets lying in front of eyes. Antennae have sensory receptors that help in monitoring the environment. Anterior end of the head bears appendages forming biting and chewing type of mouth parts. The mouth parts consisting of a labrum, upper lip, a pair of mandibles, a pair of maxillae and a labium, lower lip. A median flexible lobe, acting as tongue, hypopharynx, lies within the cavity enclosed by the mouth parts. Thorax consists of three parts, prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. The head is connected with thorax by a short extension of the prothorax known as the neck. Each thoracic segment bears a pair of walking legs. The first pair of wings arises from mesothorax and the second pair from metathorax. For wings, mesothoracic, called tegmina are opaque dark and leathery and cover the hind wings when at rest. The hind wings are transparent, membranous and are used in flight. The abdomen in both males and females consists of 10 segments. In females, the 7th sternum is boat shaped and together with the 8th and 9th sternum forms a brood or genital pouch whose anterior part contains female gonopore, spermathecal pores and collateral glands. In males, genital pouch or chamber lies at the hind end of abdomen bounded dorsally by 9th and 10th turga and ventrally by the 9th sternum. It contains dorsal anus, ventral male genital pur and gonopophysis. Males bear a pair of short, thread-like anal styles which are absent in females. In both sexes, the tenth segment bears a pair of jointed filamentous structures called anal cerci. 7.4.2 Anatomy The alimentary canal present in the body cavity is divided into three regions, foregut, midget and hindgut. The mouth opens into a short tubular pharynx, leading to a narrow tubular passage called esophagus. This in turn opens into a sac-like structure called crop used for storing of food. The crop is followed by gizador proventriculus. It has an outer layer of thick circular muscles and thick inner cuticle forming six highly chitinous plate called teeth. Gizzard helps in grinding the food particles. The entire foregut is lined by cuticle. A ring of six eight blind tubules called hepatic or gastric kiki is present at the junction of foregut and midget which secrete digestive juice. At the junction of midget and hindgut is present another ring of 100-150 yellow-colored thin filamentous malpighian tubules. They help in removal of excretory products from hemolymph. The hindgut is broader than midget and is differentiated into ilum, colon and rectum. The rectum opens out through anus. Blood vascular system of cockroach is an open type. Blood vessels are poly developed and open into space, hemocoal. Visceral organs located in the hemocoal are bathed in blood, hemolymph. The hemolymph is composed of colorless plasma and hemocytes. Heart of cockroach consists of elongated muscular tube lying along mid dorsal line of thorax and abdomen. It is differentiated into funnel shaped chambers with ostea on either side. Blood from sinuses enter heart through ostea and is pumped anteriorly to sinuses again. The respiratory system consists of a network of trachea, that open through ten pairs of small holes called spiracles present on the lateral side of the body. Thin branching tubes, tracheal tubes subdivided into tracheoles, carry oxygen from the air to all the parts. The opening of the spiracles is regulated by the sphincters. Exchange of gases take place at the tracheoles by diffusion. Excretion is performed by malpighian tubules. Each tubule is lined by glandular and ciliated cells. They absorb nitrogenous waste products and convert them into uric acid which is excreted out through the hindgut. Therefore, this insect is called uricotelic. In addition, 
the fat body, nephrocytes and uricose glands also help in excretion. The nervous system of cockroach consists of a series of fused, segmentally arranged ganglia joined by paired longitudinal connectives on the ventral side. Three ganglia lie in the thorax, and six in the abdomen. The nervous system of cockroach is spread throughout the body. The head holds a bit of a nervous system while the rest is situated along the ventral, belly side, part of its body. So, now you understand that if the head of a cockroach is cut off, it will still live for as long as one week. In the head region, the brain is represented by supraesophageal ganglion which supplies nerves to antennae and compound eyes. In cockroach, the sense organs are antennae, eyes, maxillary palps, labial palps, anal cerci, etc. The compound eyes are situated at the dorsal surface of the head. Each eye consists of about 2000 hexagonal omatidia, singular, omatidium. With the help of several omatidia, a cockroach can receive several images of an object. This kind of vision is known as mosaic vision with more sensitivity but less resolution, being common during night, hence called nocturnal vision. Cockroaches are dioecious and both sexes have well-developed reproductive organs. Male reproductive system consists of a pair of testes one lying on each lateral side in the fourth 60th abdominal segments. From each testis arises a thin vas deferens, which opens into ejaculatory duct through seminal vesicle. The ejaculatory duct opens into male gonopore situated ventral to anus. A characteristic mushroom-shaped gland is present in the 60H-70H abdominal segments which functions as an accessory reproductive gland. The external genitalia are represented by male gonopophysis or phalomir, chitinous asymmetrical structures, surrounding the male gonopore. The sperms are stored in the seminal vesicles and are glued together in the form of bundles called spermatophores which are discharged during copulation. The female reproductive cecetum consists of two large ovaries, lying laterally in the second, sixth abdominal segments. Each ovary is formed of a group of eight ovarian tubules or ovarioles, containing a chain of developing ova. Oviducts of each ovary unite into a single median oviduct, also called vagina, which opens into the genital chamber. A pair of spermatherca is present in the sixth segment which opens into the genital chamber. Sperms are transferred through spermatophores. Their fertilized eggs are encased in capsules called oedhaki. Oedhaki is a dark reddish to blackish brown capsule, about 3 8 inch, 8 millimeters, long. They are dropped or glued to a suitable surface, usually in a crack or crevice of high relative humidity near a food source. On an average, females produce 9-10 oedhaki, each containing 14-16 eggs. The development of P. Americana is poor on tabulus, meaning there is development through nymphal stage. The nymphs look very much like adults. The nymph grows by molting about 13 times to reach the adult form. The next to last nymphal stage has wing pads but only adult cockroaches have wings. Many species of cockroaches are wild and are of no economic importance. A few species thrive in and around human habitat. They are pests because they destroy food and contaminate it with their smelly excreta. They can transmit a variety of bacterial diseases by contaminating food material.